going on YouTube, Cloverville is here back with another Scarlet Violet video. And today we're doing a team building session and we're going to focus around Kali Rex Shadow Rider. So uh, this is one of the stronger restricteds, uh, you know, in the regulation G format. Uh, if not, maybe the most popular and common one right now, just because of, you know, how much damage you can put out, uh, just how much pressure it can put on the opponent uh, to respect Astro Barrage. Uh, and it can steamroll, right? Because, you know, again, with this ability as one, uh, you know, you get Grim Nay, which means, you know, if you pick up KOs, you get a plus one uh, special attack boost, right? And that that is very, very punishing and very, very detrimental. So your opponent must always have some pressure against Calyrex. Otherwise, you can just pretty much steamroll, right? And this is also why um, something like Incineroar is always important uh, in this format, just because the dark typing is very, very good uh, against the Calyrex, right? And then you're able to just KO it right back, you know, because you're four times weakness. Right? But now you have Terrestrialization available to you in Scarlet and Violet and you can help yourself get rid of this 4 times weakness when you're up against those dark types. And we'll talk about some of those terra, those terra types in a bit. But basically, the way you want to really start this team in, in the early get-go is just do stuff like this. Right, we'll, we'll give you a very, very simple core with something like Indeedee as well as something like either Tornadus or even Whimsicott can now also work on teams like this now. But the whole idea is now you're giving yourself um, psychic terrain, you're denying priority moves against Calyrex, and then at the same time, uh, you're boosting its uh, psychic moves, and it could be either expanding force, or you could either be something like Psyshock uh, if you don't want to suscept, uh, if you don't want to be susceptible to something like Wide Guard, right? So um, either way works. Uh, for the sake of our build, um, we did expanding force, uh, but we'll talk about what our single target move was in a second, right? But um, from here, then your Tornadus just gives yourself uh, some good speed control here with Tailwind. Um, and then you're able to just outspeed, you know, potential mirrors and then uh, go for those faster um, Astro Barrages, right? Which is actually your signature move, of course. You're going to be clicking this move uh, nine times out of ten, right? Um, things that are weak to, you know, psychic stuff, you know, Terra Poison stuff. This is where Expanding Force is going to be really, really helpful. But I think you always want to start like this, right? With these three. And then from here, you know, you keep building up on your on your fast mode. Uh, and then how do you make things stronger? And how do you counter or how do you deal with Incineroar? That's one of the main things that Calyrex Shadow Rider teams have to keep in mind is what is your answer to something like Incineroar, which is which can basically almost sit in front of Calyrex for a couple turns and you know put pressure with something like knockoff, right? So from here, I think we always just do stuff like Chiyu, right? You know, Chiyu uh, will make the Calyrex do more damage. Um, it's also pretty good in those sun teams, you know, if, especially when you're going up against Groudon, Chiyu can also take advantage of those sun uh, and then deal really, really good damage right back. And we've seen Tornadus Chiyu teams in the past. And then at this point, you might as well add the Flutter Main uh, to it, right? And, you know, we, now we can go something like Booster Energy Flutter Main. Uh, and then we can go something like an Icy Wind Support where we can add further speed control, outspeed the mirror. Right, you know, because we're going to be getting a speed boost, we're going to click Icy Wind. That means our Tailwind will be better um, because we have uh, a plus one speed advantage, right? Um, so you always want to do something like this in the in the beginning. And you might say, do we really need another Ghost um, with Calyrex and Fluttermane? The answer is yes, because Fluttermane is a fairy type that can deal with other dark types. So imagine something like an Urshifu single strike, which I expect to also be very common uh, in this format. Same thing with Chen Pao. Uh, Flood Main does very, very well against those things. Uh, and at the same time, it'll give yourself some good speed control with this Icy Wind stuff, right? Um, and then from here, uh, you have a couple options here. You could do something like Ogre Pond just to give yourself a little bit of redirection, just to give yourself uh, a nice little Fire Water Grass Core here with Chiyu and Ogre Pond. You don't want to be like all special attackers, right? You want to have at least one potential physical attacker. Um, or you can do something like this where you add something like Mian Xiao. Mian Xiao all of a sudden looks really good in a format like this. Uh, and we saw this towards the end of Scarlet and Violet. Not the end of Scarlet and Violet, but like, uh, I'm sorry, Sword and Shield. But in the non-Dynamax Series 10, uh, where Mian Xiao really, really helped a lot uh, against a lot of those spread moves. And Mian Xiao is good again. You know, I've seen some early Scarlet and Violet tournament data. People are using Mian Xiao again. And, you know, for good reason. One, it gets access to white guard. Two, it gets access to faint, right? So you can stop those protect stuff and, and, and that kind of stuff. And then from here, um, you also have close combat, which pretty much one-shots Incineroar, 
right? And Incineroar can't do anything to me in chat, right? Because uh, close combat pretty much just one shots it, and you know you don't get intimidated, right? And you can't fake it out either. So me and is a great pin onto uh, those Incineroars, which is really really good for you, right? <laughs> and all things considered, and then. From here, you can just have your, your last move here, which is, of course, fake out. And then you get a fake out user on your team, right? So that's also really, really nice. So we'll give you both versions of the team. We'll give you one version with Mian Chao, and then we'll give you one version with Ogre Pond. I was playing with both, okay? And it, they both work out relatively well, right? So in terms of the rest of the six, so with this Ogre Pond, uh, on this build, I went with a Focus Sash. And that's the other thing. When you have, you know, Mian Chao over here, um, let me just put Mian Chao right back Mian Xiao needs the focus sash right which means the calyrex does not get the focus sash unfortunately so you're gonna have to go with something like a choice specs route right or something like life orb or something like choice scarf either way um doesn't matter Mian Xiao will be getting the sash if you do this route um but for our purposes first uh let's do the ogre pond uh which means the sash can come back on the the calyrex right so here we go okay then from here uh you know Again, so then what is my check to Incineroar? Like Ogre Pond can do something into Incineroar, but if Incineroar intimidates me, then it's not so great. But at least with Ogre Pond, I do get something that can put pressure on stuff like Groudon and Kyogre a little bit. So, you know, because of water absorbed. So that's also relatively nice. Uh, you know, you do get that uh, uh, in, in retrospect, right? So, and then you also get a second redirector on your team. So then in, in exchange, what can I do? So then people are trying this. They, they're doing Terra Fighting, right? Terra Blast, right? And this is really good against Incineroar. It's a special attack damage. Um, so that's really nice. And then you get to KO Incineroar, right? If, if your Calyrex is already plus one, Terra Blast, Terra Fighting is KOing uh, the Incin, right? And then this last slot will be Protect. And right now it's actually pretty interesting in terms of what is the best Terra for Calyrex right now. People are trying a lot of different things. I don't know the answer to this question yet as far as like what is the the best Terra for the, the Calyrex, but I can show you a couple cool ones, right? Again, Fighting is one of them. You could also do Terra Normal for the Mirror, right? So this way you don't get hit by Astral Barrage. Um, and then you can also do Terra Fairy, uh, you know, Terra Fairy, Terra Blast. That's also pretty good against some Dark types. You can also give yourself Draining Kiss. Uh, which means now, you know, you're getting good recovery. And if you've taken damage before, Draining Kiss, especially after a boost, will just, you know, recover you back to full. And then all of a sudden you get your Focus Sash set back, right? So that's that. Or you just go straight offense and just go, um, you know, Terra Ghost over here. Okay, that's another option. Um, so I've seen that. And then some people even just go like Shadow Ball over here. It just really depends on how you want to play the Calyrex. But for our video, after testing it, I decided that Terra Blast, uh, Terra Fighting was pretty good. And then this will this is good against the Dark Types in general. So I like this. And then this is just a straight 252, 252 set. Uh, Timid Nature. You know, you want to be as fast of a Calyrex as possible. All right. Then the Indeedy over here. So Indeedy, so Psychic Seeds is pretty good. Again, with so much more special attackers being available, Psychic Seeds uh, gives the Indeedy a little bit better longevity, um, which means we're going to be also going the... The bold route or even the relaxed nature route where is that thing um yeah you could do this where you're just pretty much almost maxing out the hp oh, i'm sorry yeah pretty much the hp here is going to be pretty much maxed out and then your typical set is going to be something like follow me um with helping hand and trick room this is your this is uh, one way to play um against opposing tailwind teams where you just bring your ntd and say trick room over your tailwind um, and then it, it works from there. And then over here, you could do something like Terra Fairy um, with Dazzling Gleam. Uh, or if you don't want to be walled by Wide Guard, you can do something with like Alluring Voice, which I know people are trying now. Um, and, you know, with so much stat raising now with, you know, both Calyrexes running around, uh, as well as Protosynthesis mods running around, Alluring Voice all of a sudden has good value uh, because you can confuse the target if they had a stat risen uh, on this particular turn. So I was using it. It was actually kind of nice uh, to get that nice confusion turn out. Um, so we went with Alluring Voice on the NDD this time, right? And then from here, you just almost max out the bulk here um, with something like this. So you could just do like right here, right? And then just max out the SPDF just like this. And that's all you really need your NDD to do for, for the most part. Um, and then the Tornadus, 
So Tornadus, we decided to go with the Cobra Cloak here. So this way we don't are uh, we are also not susceptible to something like an icy wind. Um, then we went with Bleak Wind Storm. Okay, and if the Fluttermane is going with Icy Wind, uh, then we went with Taunt over here. I think Taunt Tornadus is still pretty good, and along with Protect. Um, and then something like, you could do like Terra Steel over here, right? Just to give you a little bit better um, resistance against the Ice Damage, Rock Damage also. Um, so that helps uh, in that regard. You can also do Terra Dark, uh, so this way you don't get taunted yourself. Uh, again, you know, from another Tornadus. Um, so that'll help you in that regard. Um, really, it just depends on how you want to run. You're not really going to be doing your Tornadus, uh, tearing your Tornadus all that much. But again, yeah, I, I, I leave it up to you. I think Steel is pretty good um, in my opinion. So, you know, you can leave it like that. Uh, Chiyu over here. So what I really liked about Chiyu when I was doing this is I like the Choice Scarf. Just being able to outspeed another Calyrex Shadow Rider and to be able to click Snarl on these guys. Um, it is very, very punishing, and they don't do any damage to Chiyu after once you snarl them. They're almost dead at that point, right? So, uh, Heat Wave, Overheat, uh, for sure, just to blow something up, and then, of course, Dark Pulse, uh, and then Snarl, right? So, I really like Chiyu here. Uh, when I was experimenting with it and testing it, uh, I just liked the fact that I could just go for these, uh, fast snarls, right? And then, along with Fluttermane over here, can give me more speed control. Um, and where I and then from there, you know, I just kept cooking heat waves and whatnot. It was really, really nice. And with um, Chiyu, I was actually going a modest set, believe it or not. So I still went max speed. 152 is pretty good, um, outspeeding the 149s. And then I just go to the bump here, 116 investments. And then the rest just went into um, HP like this, right? And again, if you don't know what EV bumps are, make sure you comment in the video description below. Um, you know what are EV bumps? Because they're an important part in trying to, you know, create EVs for Pokemon. Especially if you want to play competitive Pokemon, if you want to get better at it. So make sure you comment what are EV bumps. And then I can explain it and answer you. Uh, just so that you get a sense of how I'm able to do these and go for these benchmarks here. Right? Um, Fluttermane over here. So, you know, Moonblast and Shadow Ball. Your two stab moves and then Protect. This is going to be good. Um, we give up Dazzling Gleam. You know, that's okay. Uh, in this kind of... Um, format it's fine you still get icy wind which is good enough speed control on this sense uh if you want to put speed control and put icy wind here instead of protect then you can go and put dazzling gleam either way it's okay um but i went timid here right and i went timid this time i'm gonna go a little bit faster i went timid 196 so usually i go to 132 um back in regulation e and beforehand right to outspeed you know the mirror flutter modest but now we're gonna go to 196 benchmark here we're going to hit the bump, right, 198, because if you do a little bit of math, right, 198 divided by 2, or sorry, 1.5, uh, that hits 132. So that, that's another important benchmark there. So we're going to hit that mark. And then from here, you know, I just want enough bulk where I can still survive Chen Pao Icicle Spinner, right? So something like this is going to be good, right, right here, yeah. Oh, a little bit more. Yeah, 100, 148. That's that's good enough bulk for me. Um, but yeah, now we're much faster than our previous Flutter main. So now we can win good speed ties uh, in that sense. So uh, then over here in the Ogre Pond, I think Ivy Cudgel just makes sense. Horn Leech, Follow Me, and then Spiky Shield. Okay, and really the main calc here is, besides Admin Nature, is this mark, 252, 100. Uh, this survives Single Strike Urshifu. Um, wicked blow then we hit the bump here in adamant nature and then a couple points here in spadef and then after that you just do um about 68 investment here and that's uh really all you need out of your ogre pond just be super bulky and just do a little bit of damage right back uh you can play this ogre pond a little bit faster so if you want you can technically do a jolly set where you're just going for 169 like this uh, yeah, so this way you outspeed something like a Landris Incarnate, and then from there, uh, you just uh, dump the rest into your bulk, for example, like this, and there, there's your Ogre Pond, right? You could do that, or, but I, I, I've always liked playing my Ogre Pond super bulky, so for me, I just do this, and, you know, I'm, I'm okay after that, right? I still get my defensive cow. But this is like the, but now, like, again, uh, with Terra Fairy Fluttermane over here, 
this is a very easy build, right? You know, it's a very good starting build. It's something that you can jump onto ladder with and start practicing and start doing things uh, with Calyrex. Uh, and again, if you can tell how it functions, right? I want to hit hard. I want to hit fast. Okay, I have some bulk here, you know, um, with the, the Chiyu, the Ogre Pond, and the Flutterman a little bit, with the Ndidi as well. Um, I have good speed control with Trick Room, Tailwind, and Icy Wind. I have a Scarf Chiyu, so that's going to be good. Uh, so all in all, like a lot of good aggressive tools that a, a typical hyper offensive team wants. Um, so now what I'm also going to do is I'll show you the, the, the Mian Chao version. Okay, so that one looks like this where we went with the choice specs route. Okay, and we'll adjust the protect item in a second. But instead of Ogre Pond, again, I did have the Mian Chao over here. Um, with of course inner focus focus sash here and then we'll just put all his move sets back uh with you know uh wide guard uh fake out post combat uh wide guard and then faint okay that's really good and then just 2v2 here you, know, you are a, a sash at. I, I went jolly um you know again not jolly i'm sorry uh yeah no i did go jolly yeah 172 that's pretty good that outspeeds another Chiyu that's not Sash. And, you know, Chiyus are really dangerous against Calyrex right already. So if I can have outspeed an opposing Chiyu and KO them right back with something like close combat, that's also very, very good. Um, we'll leave it at Terra Fighting. That's also really nice what we want with me and Xiao. But I also, um, with this kind of idea, we went, we still went with the Fire, Water, Grass stuff. So I chucked the Fluttermane actually, right? And I still kept the Ogre Pond. Okay, so yeah, I guess I should have just, uh, it would have been much easier to just EV that way, right? So I did this, right? Let me just go back to my, my typical build. Okay, Adam in nature. All right, so Ivy Cudgel, um, Horn Leech, Follow Me, Spiky Shield. Okay, so I still keep my Fire Water Grass Core. And now I get a second physical attack on the team, which is good because look, I had four special attackers already. Um, but now I still have my Kyogre stuff. I still have my Mancha, which is good into Insin. Um, and I still keep everything else. Now, what is the main difference here? Um, oh, we forgot to do Tornado CV. So this, yeah, let's, we'll also adjust the other team. So we'll do the, the Bold Nature route. I like a physically bulky Tornadus, right? So I, I just did something like this, you know, just very, very general. Hit the benchmark here. There it is. And then I don't really need much anything else. I don't need special attack or spadef. I maybe need a tiny bit of speed. Uh, so, you know, I don't speed time my, my Ogre Pond here a little bit. But after that, um, yeah, that's really all you really need your Tornadus to do. Um, so the Calyrex here um, with the specs. So I still, I changed this to Terra Fairy because I was still experimenting with Draining Kiss. Okay. And after that, I also had the single target move of Shadow Ball. And that was what I was testing, right? So this way, um, you know, I still have a single target move to click, but again, most times I was either clicking Astro Barrage or Expanding Force, right? The Terra Fairy was more a defensive Terra rather than an offensive Terra. Um, so, you know, at first I was still, I still kept that at Terra Fighting, but eventually after testing, um, you know, I was a little bit more comfortable with the Terra Fairy option in my opinion, right? So this is the second one. Okay. And again, we'll also adjust the first one in a second where we just, uh, you know, we can just put the Tornado series right back here. All right. So what I want to do is actually just show you a couple test games, you know, with the team, just to show you how it pilots and how it functions. Uh, so this way you can get a sense of how you can use it yourself. All right. So let's take a look at some sample games. All right. So we're going to show you the Mian Chao version over here. So basically, you know, we're playing against Kyurem here. So Kyurem is actually really interesting this time around, especially with Ninetales. Now it gets like a nice, good, solid defensive bulk uh, with the snow. And then, of course, Ninetales gives pressure with, with screens, right? So uh, it has the advantage over Articuno where, like, you know, you're just dealing more damage. You don't need a choice specs. Um, and, you know, you just have a bunch of support options here. But either way, I still think uh, we have the upper hand here. He goes with Incineroar, which we kind of have to make a call here. So we're just going to go Calyrex and we're also going to go with the Mian Shao here, right? So he can't fake out anything here. And I'm going to be a little bit more ad adventurous, right, with what I wanted to do here. Um, I don't necessarily need this Terra fighting here. And again, at the time I was fighting and as opposed to the fairy option. Um, and I just go Astro Barrage here. I want to remove the Iron Bundle specs. Calyrex does so much damage. And then now 
uh, we just go with the close combat here, right? So, you know, uh, it, it's just a nice way to remove Incineroar turn one. He goes with the Cure and he goes with Ninetales here. I am slower, right? I can always click Wide Guard here, um, you know, just to stop his Blizzard stuff. He goes Moonblast. I'm, I'm, I'm able to survive, which is good, right? And then he does get the special attack drop. So he removes my buff, which means the Ninetales gets to live. And the Kyurem takes a little bit less damage, um, but we get to wall out the wide guard here. So let me just reset the calories. Let me go into Ndidi here, right? And at this point, me and Shadow already did its job. So if it wants to go down, he can go down. All right, and it does. He crits me anyway. It doesn't really matter. He was dead anyway. But now we get to bring back in the calories. We outspeed everything, right? And all we have to do is just click a simple helping hand and a simple Astro Barrage. And the game is over in four turns, as you see right here. So this is a pretty easy game, right? You know, all things considered, uh, all we had to do is just remove the Incineroar and Calyrex was just Poison Sweep. Okay, a potential mirror matchup here with his own Tornadus Calyrex, but he has no Ndidi here. Uh, and he does have Incineroar again. But uh, again, I, I, I'm making another little call here. I'm going to say he doesn't really bring the Incineroar into this. I, he probably just wants to match... Calyrex or Calyrex or even like with his own Fluttermain over here. So I wanted to actually just put pressure with Chiyu here. So um, he, I do Tornadus Chiyu actually, right? So this way I have Heat Wave and Snarl Pressure depending on how he leaves this because he has Chen Pao and Amoongus there. So Fluttermain Calyrex, this is where the value of Scarf Chiyu comes into play. So I wanted to play a little bit greedy with my Tornadus. So I know that Snarl is going to outspeed these things, right? Neutralize their special attack damage. So we live the Calyrex stuff, which is nice. Um, but I don't live the double up from the Fluttermane. I thought I could live after a Snarl, but I don't. But that's okay, because I know he doesn't want to lose the Calyrex now, even though it's, you know, could be a speed side. So I'm still going for the Snarl. I know he wants to preserve it, so I know he's going to switch, which means I'm in control. That means he does no damage. I'm dealing all the damage this turn. And now Calyrex with the Chiyu can just pretty much destroy everything, right? And he has no answer for this, right? Even though I got greedy with the Tornadus, um, he, he can't really... Do anything about it because uh everything was snarled and you know scarf chiyu is just really good here so you get to see the value out of it all right how about the other calyrex right the 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 instant p2 amoongus core uh with calyrex i started this is also how we're gonna build it so stay tuned for that video at some point but basically i make a little call here so he's gonna go into amoongus p2 I wanted to do Ndidi and I wanted to go into Mian Xiao here. So this way I could flip Trick Room and maybe one shot a Porygon or an Incineroar. He leads the Amoongus though. So I'm just going to go into Calyrex here and I'm going to have to take one for the team here with the Ndidi. I'm just going to take the Spore. I don't want the Calyrex to take a Spore. So I just redirect everything. All right. So that's all I could really do. But now in exchange, I get expanding force pressure onto the Amoongus. I don't have to worry about Spore. Um, the Porygon in exchange does get to set up Trick Room and in comes the Calyrex, right? So that's the drawback here. Um, so that's unfortunate, but at the very least, um, I can I know I can take one of these. So he goes Glacial Lance. He unfortunately crits the Calyrex. So I do die to that and it gets a Grim Nade boost. Uh, but the Indeedy living here is actually quite interesting. And, you know, it may pay dividends, but unfortunately it doesn't, right? Because I stay asleep. But I do have an Ogre Pond here against his Terra Water Calyrex. I thought that was a mistake here. This is where Ogre Pond has good value. So even though the Calyrex has a plus one boost, um, this is still okay. Because now um, I can also do some damage next turn, uh, you know, with this Horn Leech and get all my recovery back, right? And now the Calyrex is really chipped. And now we have Man Chow here. Um, I can't really click um, Fake Out, but I can click White Guard, which is what helps me here um, in, in exchange, right? Terra Blast, I live this. And now I get to remove the calories off the board. So it did some damage early on, but now I was able to use Mian Xiao and Ogre Pond to help me get back into this, right? So now here comes the Ursh, right? And now it's just Urshifu versus my Ogre Pond here, right? Mian Xiao kind of just did its job already, right? So it's free to go down at this point, right? Because I know the Ogre Pond can beat the Urshifu. Now it's just all about beating this Porygon. Okay, so there's the Horn Leech, right? And then, you know, after this, there's just a bunch of Horn Leeching. Right, and then I'm back to full. The Porygon sets up Trick Room, but it doesn't really matter because I'm doing more damage than he is recovering, right? So I'm able to just do IB Cudgels on him, right? And he can't really break my Ogre Pond, right? As long as I'm doing this, right, and dealing more damage with IB Cudgel, eventually the Porygon just doesn't have any way around it, and eventually his Trick Room expires, and then we're able to beat him on the next following turn, right? So, you know, that's really all there really is because to it right he's just gonna do this for a couple more turns but 
Um, again, we just have so much more damage. Look at look at how much Ivy Cudgel does, right? So from here, you know, it's just pretty much over. Okay, let's use the other team now. So this one is uh, using Reshiram over here with screens. That was a thing back in Sword and Shield a little bit. Um, there is Walking Wake here, but no Sun. So that's pretty interesting. But uh, I still think Fluttermane Chi looks really good here, just uh, in terms of everything he has here. So I kind of want to just lead that, especially if he's going to do Grimstar stuff. So here's Chi Fluttermane here. There's Reshiram, and there is the Grimstar. I expect this, right? But again, um, Snarl just really cripples the Reshiram, all things considered, right? And, you know, Scarf Chi is really good. So there's the Light Screen. Again, just trying to do some damage into the Grimstar. And then Snarl is just so punishing. The Grimstar stays around, unfortunately, but, you know, Reshiram, after it took a Snarl, just doesn't do as much damage, right? So he goes into Landris here. Um, which is fine, I guess, because now we just go Moonblast into the Landris, and then we just Snarl the Grim Snarl, and the Landris still lives, right? So, you know, great, but um, here comes the Flutter, but we have the Speed Boost, right? So he goes Terra Fairy Flutter, that's fine, we Shadow Ball, um, we just get a little bit of chip, Snarl is just so punishing into the Landris, right? We Well, first of all, we KO it, and now the Flood is just minus one, we live everything now, so, you know, and he's actually Life Orb Flutter, so that's also really nice. But again, Scarf Chiyu looking really good. There's the Moonblast, right? And then here's another Snarl. So um, Flood Mane is now minus two. Restaurant back to minus one. And, you know, Chiyu does drop here. And you know, Flood Mane takes some damage. But, you know, in the end, um, we're still able to live. Look at that. Like, now we survived this little Reshiram Shadow Ball shenanigans. Okay, this one is a Karine on Sun team here with Walking Wake. And there's the Jump Fluff stuff. People are definitely going to try something like this. And Incineroar in the Sun looks really, really good. Um, I just don't think you need jump off. I, I, I don't even, I understand Brief Bond is maybe something for Calyrex, but you know, it's an interesting team. I'll, I'll give it like that. Uh, but anyway, I still think Tornadus looks really good here along with Chiyu, right? If he's going to give me the sun, that's only going to help Chiyu, right? Both of these are definitely weak to sun. One of them is probably either going to have to switch or go Terra Water, but either way, um, the, he goes for Tailwind, which is fine, but we go, you know, Heat Wave and Chiyu just doing so much damage, especially modest Chiyu here. And then I get a little greedy with the Bleak Wind, and I already just removed the Karite on turn one. So he loses both Mons. So now it's just Flutter Main, and now it's just Brute Bonnet. That's fine too, right? Of course, because we can have our own um, speed control here. We can have our own Tailwind, right? We can have our own Heat Wave. It's going to do a lot. Chiyu takes a crit, unfortunately, right? But still, like, Heat Wave does so much into Flutter. It's going to drop next turn, right? Seed Bomb, we actually live because we have good bulk on the Chiyu. So good job, Clover Bells, with your EVs. Sucker Punch, again, Tornado surviving, but Dazzling Gleam picks up everything. So he still outspeeds me, which is still fine, um, all things considered, because now everything's been chipped. We bring in our own Flutter, and we bring in our Ndidi here. Um, so, you know, he still has a little bit more of a command and damage. He also has Spore Pressure, but as long as I just get rid of his other Flutter main, I should be okay, right? Which is exactly what I'm doing, okay? And he does Spore my Ndidi. So he's trying to make a comeback here. He's in a decent spot, actually. Okay, he has leftovers brute bonnet. I go terra fairy. I need some damage. Indeed, he stays asleep, unfortunately, but Moonblast does good damage into the brute bonnet. Um, and then Seed Bomb, we live it because we have good bulk. That's huge, in all honesty. Uh, that probably would have just won in the game, right? You know, if he just removes the flutter. So I protect this turn. I'm trying to wake up here just to give myself a turn. Um, you know, so and now it just all comes down to this. Um, but the indeed, he does fortunately wake up. I just want to redirect all its moves. I go for Moonblast again, right? He spores the Ndidi, but that doesn't really matter because Fluttermane has more than enough damage to just remove the Brute Bonnet this turn, uh, you know, with another Moonblast, and that's exactly what happens. So good job from our opponent, right? With Brute Bonnet, you know, Ndidi Fluttermane may not be the best thing to bring in the back, but uh, we did it anyway. We didn't even bring Calyrex. All right, so there's the squads. Again, this one is with Mianxiao over here, you know, with the Ogre Pond and no Fluttermane. It specs Calyrex. Right, so, you know, just be careful with this kind of team, you know, again, because you only have two protects, but, you know, it still it still works fine. Uh, there's plenty of hyper offensive teams with just two protects or even three. Uh, this one, uh, the other one has four, you know, this one is Terra Blast, Terra Fighting. Uh, but again, you get the Scarf Chi of uh, Fluttermane, Icy Wind stuff, along with Ogre Pond support over here. So, you know, we gave you two teams. Let me know how you do with either one of them, uh, but at least we get you started. Uh, with something uh, like a Calyrex Shadow Rider team to, you know, to begin the format. And if there's something specific that you want to build yourself 
and need a little bit of help, sign up for team building coaching on the channel. Uh, tier three sub gets you that one-on-one -on -one session with me. Uh, so take a look at the video description or the pinned comment section. There is a link where you can join the channel with that tier three sub. And then from there, you can message me on Discord. You can join the Discord too. Uh, that's also technically free. You don't have to you know, be a tier sub to join the Discord. But once you um, do sub, then you can message me. And then we can plan a session together uh, and get you a team that you need for that first upcoming Indiana Regional. Uh, or maybe uh, you just want to play something in online tournaments and test some stuff uh, before Indiana, right? So that's going to do it for now, folks. We'll be back with another video in the next one. Peace out. Have a good one.